strategy for the future. The word strategy means a plan of action designed to achieve a long-term or overall aim. Strategy means a plan of action designed to achieve a long-term overall aim. Future is simply regarded as worth to come at a later time, going or likely to happen or exist. Therefore, strategy for the future is a plan of action or policy designed to achieve a major overall aim at a later time to come. Strategy is the key to winning. It is good strategy that brings distinction. Poor strategy can bring tragedy. That will not be your portion. No one gets to a future he or she did not prepare for. He said, and Jotam became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. Second Chronicles chapter 27, verse 6. Your level of preparation for the future is what will guarantee the level of greatness and success you will attain. The future of anyone, any family, any organization, even a nation, will remain blank without adequate planning. And the Addis and the well, the wise man said, if you fail to plan, you are planned to fail. You will never fail. Amen. Success is a matter of luck. Ask any failure, a wise man said. Why you need to plan is this. <laughs> if you don't plan, you think the devil is the one worrying you. The almighty God is a master planner. If you look at the book of Genesis chapter 1, you find that God took time to plan. He never created the fishes until there was water. He made sure there was water before fishes came. He never created the animals until there was forest, a bush for them to stay. He never created men until there was a garden for the man to stay. There was order. Every time you see yourself under stress, you lack planning. Oh, I'm under pressure. You lack planning. God in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I'll read the verse of that version. He said, for I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans I have for you. So God is a planner. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for evil. To give you a future and what? I have a plan for you. Jesus planned even for our future. To tell you how God believes in order. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. He didn't just say, hey, one day you go to heaven. He said, look, in John chapter 14 verse 2, to tell you how God believes in planning, he said, my father says there are many mansions. If you are not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I'm, go, I'm planning. I'm not just saying come over without making arrangement. I make sure you stay in a comfortable environment. See how God plans? He said, I don't want to just come to heaven for heaven's sake. I want to come to heaven where I prepare you a good place to stay. What is your long-term plan and what is your short-term plan? You are preparing to buy new clothes? Nothing bad. You are preparing to do good hair? Nothing bad. But what is your plan for goodness sake? Planning is a written list of arranged actions necessary to achieve your desired goal. That's planning. Your future can be realized if you are not a strategic planner. It is the master key to a life of accomplishment. May your planning change your story in the name of Jesus. Yeah. In our plan is, plan is bringing the future into the present so you can do something about it now. That's planning. So I refuse to live to mere wishes. I plan my life. Have a plan and set goals for your future achievements. There are four areas of planning. Four areas of planning. Number one, personal planning. 
Number two, planning for the family. Number three, I call it institutional slash organizational planning. Number four, national planning. Now, number one is personal planning. Planning is personal worth. That has to do with you as a person. Personal planning. Never live a day without adequate planning. My personal assistant knows what I do every day. Before I wake up any day, before I wake up, I must plan the next day, the previous day. I'll write it down. Everything I'll do, I'll write them down. I do it every day. Seven, this to this, I'll read. This to this, I'll do. I don't just say it. This to this, I'll read a certain number of chapters of the Bible. This to this, I'll make phone calls. This to this, I'll be able to call one, two, three, four, five persons. This to this, I'll have to read this book. This to this, such a person will come. This to this, I will write them before the next day. Every, I must write what I'll do a day before the following day. It makes you to live a life of order. Let me say this to you. If you don't write, you may not achieve anything that week. You'll be busy, but you'll not be effective. Same is true for a month, for a year, and for one's life. It pays to plan ahead. An uncommon life requires an uncommon plan. Document your plan clearly on paper or tablet. Because the future, the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. God will always honor those who plan. He gave you a vision. He gave you an idea. He won't plan for you. He said the preparation of the heart is in man. So the planning cannot be done by God. Now listen carefully. God gave you an idea, but he will never plan for you. That's why we're talking. He said the preparation, Proverbs chapter 16 verse 1. You are the one who do the planning. Then you present it to God. But he won't plan for you. Get clear. Please, listen, listen. Hey, this is what I'm saying. God gives you an idea, but he will not do the planning for you. Mm, he won't do it. God is not an abracadabra God. He believes in planning. He believes in what? He gave you an idea for business. I'll go to that one. Look at Noah, for instance. He told him to build an ark, but Noah planned the building of what? The ark. Solomon planned the building of the temple. Moses planned the building of the tabernacle. Each one did the planning. He only gave them the vision. Do you understand what I'm saying here? It is when you have done that, you consult the Holy Spirit. Consult who? To be your helper. Constantly consult him for guidance and direction. That's where it comes in. But you do the planning, then you consult him. John chapter 14, verse 26. He now consults him for his guidance and for his... And I pray from today, you will never miss it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Involve wise counsel from time to time. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9. Two are better than one. Proverbs 11 verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people will fall. But in the midst of counselors, there is safety. So plan your life. Seek wise counsel. And the principal tool for planning is thinking. Is what? All reasoning. So the principal tool for planning is your brain. Is your what? Sit down and use your brain to get your gain. This is the Sit down and listen. Why am I stressing my life like this? Why will I be buying and tomorrow every day, wahala, wahala, they come to my door knocking up and down? Sit down and listen. He said, Come, let us walk. He said, Come, let us pray together. Prayer cannot take the place of planning. Hey, prayer cannot take the place of planning. He said, Come, let us listen. Listen, why am I giving myself stress like this? Ah, is it necessary? So that's Isaiah chapter 1, 18 and 19. Number two. Planning for the family. Planning for what? Every family needs a plan. Don't send your children to a school bigger than your income. Sit down as a family and say, how much do we have, husband and wife? This is our income. Our children should go to this kind of school. Don't rent apartments you can't afford to pay. Stop stressing your family. 
Stop what? As a family, we have always lived our size. There was a time for rice and palm oil, there was a time for stew without too much meat, and the time has come now I can eat anything. But I didn't stress myself at any point. I had the women also hear me. Hey, that somebody is buying chicken if your size is ice fish. My mother, when she, when she was alive, made a very profound statement. She said, stomach does not tell what you eat except the mouth. She said, my children, whatever you eat, except you say it, nobody will know. Just be okay. She said, stomach does not say what it is. It's only mouth that says. If you say you eat chicken or you don't eat chicken, keep quiet. Will they know? Have you seen anybody say, say you ate chicken? That your friend bought chicken. You now want to kill yourself. Want to chicken your life? <laughs> Let me say this. Is. Reason for failure in families is taking action without planning. Taking what? You go, send the children to school before you come back and start looking for school fees. That's what I mean. You take action without what? You first of all put them in a school. Then after that, you now run back and say, you know what? Sir, if you can give me school fees, eh? go. I know God will bless you. You have taken action without what? Planning. You went and rented a three-bedroom apartment. Well, you know what you can afford is one, one, one bedroom. Then after you have rented, after one year, you now rush back to people to trouble them up and down. Write a note to everybody in the church. As if they force you. Even as a family, tell everybody to invest. Wife, invest. Don't go and buy a rapper. And tie yourself off of the kingdom. Don't wear a coat so that nobody sees your face. As a family, invest. As a family, what? Invest. Three, I call it institutional planning. Institutional what? Or organizational planning. <laughs> As an institution, many of you have companies, but you have no plan for the company. Now, do you know many people don't differentiate between personal and institutional planning? I'm going to tell you something that will be very profound. Many, many businessmen cannot differentiate the two. They are different between David Biomi and Salvation Ministries. Listen, I'm in mean a business. They are, not, they are not the same. They are not what? Listen, I can spend my money anyhow. I can't spend church money anyhow. There's different. Most of you, you are a company, you use it as if you know, it's an institution. It's a what? Don't just say, Kasia, give me money. We are going to a village. Oh, that's what the company has been crashing every day. That company is a company. You call it company. Don't say because you're managing it, you have to spend the money anyhow. No! No! It's an institution. So as an institution, it must leave you as a founder. Every business requires business plan. Because what? Let me say this to you. <laughs> as an organization, have a structure, have a worth. You don't have to have an accountant to be what? Accountable. I will pay transport for a program. As I call the presentation, I will write it. Transportation. I will sign this sign for this or tomorrow. Somebody. 97, no, no accountable, I sign. I won't be here forever. Whether you like it or not, I won't be here forever. So already we are put to a place where tomorrow somebody who succeeds me when I'm old is at line. There will be no confusion. Many Pentecostals have nothing, no structure. So when the man dies, there's confusion. No. Everything is written. Who will take over? What kind of person will take over is written? Don't, don't assume. Many clinics, many chambers. Once the man dies, the chambers dies because he has no plan, no structure. How come all the medical hospitals in Nigeria, not one at leave the founders? No structure. He runs it as if it's a just one man business. You have called an institution, you're called an organization, then have a plan for it. So I hear. A plan before Jesus was slain. He planned it. He planned it. the coming of Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus. You, no plan. And you have a company. Some of you know your company, no structure. No what? No structure. The checkbook is in your pocket. <laughs> and it's a company. You call it limited. Company, you don't have an accountant, you don't have anything, and you're counting millions. By the time a company start counting from 10 million, you should have an accountant. You're having a contract of 170 million, you don't have an accountant. You already know that you don't have a future, no plan. Anybody here who has a contract of 170 million, you have done, and you don't have an accountant, just know you don't have a structure. Well, national planning. Nations must also plan. Nations must also what? Now, listen carefully. 
In this area, I'll talk about the African nation more because of my teaching. People are watching from all over the world. Uh, I'm not a racist. I will never be a racist, but I just want to narrow it to Africa because that's where the kind of teaching I want to teach follows more. But it applies to so many nations, applies to so many national planning. Now, for instance, African nations must plan. African nations must what? African nations must plan. The world is witnessing a trend among Western nations, shutting their doors to immigrants, tightening their immigration laws to make the gaining of visas difficult for Africans. You agree with me? While that may seem like a negative trend, particularly to those in the African continent who want to pursue their dreams living in the Western worlds, I also see it as a wake-up call for Africa. It is a wake-up call for all the African countries as well as other countries that have been labeled as underdeveloped or developing nations. African leaders should go back to the drawing board and make Africa great again. Make it greater than it was when the Western world could risk everything and sail to the African shores. Africa had so much potential that they spent months on sea to come and buy goods and even slaves. Africa has resources, both human and natural. It is time for African leaders to create the right business environment that encourages the best brains from exporting their knowledge to Western worlds that obviously look down on them now. Most nations treat Africans as nuisance. And it's time African leaders develop the continent that will turn the tables around. Africans go there to study and spend billions of dollars adding to the economy. The so-called great nations were built on the back of slaves. You have helped them build their countries, it's time to build yours. If African governments invest in education, I don't think anyone will want to go abroad to study. Let me say this so you never vote a non-visionary leader. It's time you stop voting politicians. It's time you vote visionaries. Listen, politicians don't change nations. Visionaries change nations. Stop voting politicians. Start voting visionaries. We have been voting politicians. That's why Nigeria has never improved. Don't vote a politician. Politicians don't change nations. Visionaries change nations. Tools for effective work. Number one tool, write your plan for the future. Write your plan for the world. Write it down. As you go home, not, don't just copy this note and say, hmm, she ran to me, but teach. When you go home, when you work, go and write the things you want to do for yourself, for your family, and for your company if you have a company. So don't say, go and write it down. Go and write it. Wow. Number two, have a picture of greatness for the future. Have a picture of what? Have a picture of greatness for the future. Genesis 13, 14, and 15. Every plan you have should have a time frame. Should have what? Don't have a plan and don't give it a time frame. Because even if you plan to play football, you can't play football at 35. Eh? He said, God told me I'll be a world-class footballer. And you don't have a time frame to pursue your career. Hmm? They don't learn how to write with left hand in old age. Even if you reduce the age, like the way Nigerian footballers most of them reduce, and they are not up to 30, they've gone to China. You may not be able to run. You are 28, you cannot even run again. You should know that the man is 38. Eh? There's a Nigerian footballer who was celebrating 35 when his own twin brother was already 48. <laughs> He reduced the age. <laughs> One of our pastors here was 27 when his own classmate, who was older than him in school, was playing under 17. So now, they will not take that kind of man as under 17 for a club when he's already around 28. So he will now go as 16 years plus to 17 to play football. And they will be using that age to be testing him to say, boy, you have to play 90 minutes. <laughs> he will play three years. I mean, <laughs> Amen. So, my friend, give yourself time, frame. I don't play again. 
I can't be doing like the small boys of 33. They have plenty of time to play. Me, I can't play like that. Everything now, fast, 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 fast. Quick, 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 quick. University, quick. Everything quick because no time to play. Is he at 80? I'm going to stay outside. Even if you reduce your age, don't you know your age? <laughs> that you give us official age, you are still doing CCA, my friend, plan your life. <laughs> that you dye your hair, will you die everywhere? Plan your life. Yeah, this is this, 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 you, are, you are getting matured. You won't plan your life. That you are, you know, me, I'm 35. Everybody's seeing you that you're 45. You're still saying 35. <laughs> 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 a woman was doing 40th birthday when her younger brother was only 42. <laughs> yeah, don't hear me. She was doing 40th, and her younger brother was 42 already. There are women who never pass 40. Even men now reduce age, or men reduce age. Even men of God reduce age. Men of God, you see a man old says 50 years. Now, now it's 50 years that's reigning. Everybody 50 years. 50 years. Even someone who's 56 say 50 years. <laughs> Even men of God 50 years. Old men 50 years. Yeah. And so, so I see all these people.